guys and welcome back to another tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the return procedure block that basically allows you to add additional conditions to um, blocks, plants, uh, AI tasks, structures, portals, and range items. Um, from what Clemen was also saying, uh, you can actually call a procedure and return its value. So I'll have to look into that in the future, but uh, currently we're just gonna be looking at additional conditions um, today. So probably wondering what's what's going on with all these structures. Uh, now, the structures uh, that I have set up actually use additional conditions. Um, to test if the block below it is a solid block. Now because structures are generated after the train is, so anything like the uh, blocks here, all this uh, with the grass and everything is actually uh, generated I believe after um, or before the structures are. So you can actually test for um, mostly for the blocks that are already generated in. Now sometimes they do bug out and it doesn't have time to render all of it in and test for all the conditions. It might think that it's a solid block but uh, that's just kind of the way Minecraft generates. I don't think there's any real way to test or fix that issue. Uh, but mostly as you can see that uh, a lot of them uh, it's actually testing if there is a solid block underneath and uh, with some extra uh, playing around with conditions and stuff like that you could probably make structures only spawn if there is proper uh, blocks underneath it so this will open a lot more doors for that uh, also with that being said uh, you can actually get structures to generate in caves now on the roof on the floor, on the sides of the floor, any basic place that uh, you normally wouldn't be able to uh, generate it because you needed to test to see if there was an air block there or cave air or whatever. So you can actually do that now too and it will generate um, accordingly to where you test for it. So it opens a lot more doors to basically test for uh, structures or basically test like you could basically make uh, biome uh, environments now based just using structures so it's very limited you can't obviously replace everything using structures but you can definitely add to it so uh, that will hopefully be a future tutorial on adding uh, structure I don't know what's going on here <laughs> this one's missing a floor. Oh, that's weird. All right. Um, yeah, you can basically add structures to the uh, caves and stuff now too. I was, I've been playing around with that recently in one of my mods that I might re release a trailer video for pretty soon. Um, but yeah, so let's hop into the code and I'll show you how it all works. And it's not that complicated, actually. I was expecting it to be more complicated than it was because I didn't know enough about it but uh, I did eventually figure it out and uh, with the help of uh, Golderion and Clement I was able to figure out the stuff that I didn't know. So if we go into structures you'll find uh, some additional procedures. Um, one is for uh, on structure instance. This was in here before um, additional conditions were added. Now this doesn't need uh, to return false or true or whatever you want to set your conditions with. Um, basically this just basically allows you to run additional script after the structure generates. This is what we're going to be focusing on today which is additional generation conditions. Uh, now basically what I've done for this particular uh, example is I've tested for a solid block uh, underneath the structure so because we're generating the structure one block above the terrain where it's generating on this is because we've offset it at one we need to we know now that the terrain should be a solid block underneath the structure itself 
So we need to test for y minus one and then the coordinates of where the box need to be solid for. So I've basically tested a three by three grid for all the solid blocks. There's obviously going to be easier ways to test for all that. Uh, you could probably run a uh, repeater and then uh, basically update the um, X positions and stuff like that. These numbers here based on um, a variable so you can basically run a variable and test for a whole bunch of conditions and then you know return true or whatever if it's uh, basically a solid block in that place if they're all solid but that's a lot of work for something that's just this small so it's not that much you probably use that on larger structures like houses and stuff um, but uh, what I've basically done was test for the condition and I'll return true if it was a solid block in that location and uh, the only other thing that we needed to do was return false if it wasn't so uh, as you can see if we remove that from the if statement uh, it basically uh, gives us a warning down here it says uh, it needs to return a value so basically what we need to do is make sure that the mean procedure um, anything that needs to test for it needs to end with a return value so if we place that on here it basically returns false and then it uh, basically works uh, now basically if we were to um, set all this to test for if it's not there we could actually reverse these around so we could set this to uh, true and that to false and then what we would do is basically um, replace this with not equal to or not there and that would basically do this exact same thing it's just an alternate way of doing it um, all you're basically doing is testing for a condition and then returning its value if it's true or not and the structure will generate based on what value is outputted so uh, in our case, we just set this to true and set that to false. And other than that, uh, you can use else statements too. Um, if you wanted to, or not else statement, else if statements, you could basically break this up into two parts if you wanted to, or whatever you wanted to do uh, with your thing. But uh, the return function, it, it doesn't work in else statements. If we put it in here you get the same error that it needs to end with a return block so um, this would be just extra conditions of what you would need to some cases most cases you wouldn't need um, an else statement you would just look for the else if statements and other conditions that you might want to test for if that's not true so uh, another thing that was commonly asked on my channel, I noticed that people wanted to know how the portals worked. There is a procedure called um, uh, basically condition if the player can teleport through the portal and uh, basically it uses the same type of procedure. Uh, the only thing that we're doing though is rather than testing for the block, uh, what you would want to do is test for the item in the player's inventory. So we would basically drag that over here, we would test for our item, and if it returns true, then we will return true um, for allowing the player to go through the portal. If not, then we're not going to let them go through the portal. That's how it would basically work if um, you wanted to restrict the portal if they didn't have an item. So there's different things that you can do uh, with the return values. This basically is the simplest way I can explain it. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.